الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله وأتي الرسول وأولو الأمر منكم and always a reminder from myself and abdukul aji sadaifu miskeen zalim wa and but for the grace of Allah that I'm still in existence to admit our weakness and our nothingness so that a divine support to reach inshaAllah from Mawlana Shaykh's teachings what has been taught on how to conduct oneself to reach towards the Rahmah and the grace of Allah is to efface and to be nothing. Alhamdulillah in this holy month the holy surah is the 27th surah of holy Qur'an dressing this reality of Shams al-Arafeen, this Gnostic reality Shams being the son, the son of knowers and Gnosticism. And its importance, right, do I hear echo? Its importance in the way of marifah, in the way into the heart of the Divine, the Presence that is not on heaven and not on earth but within the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad The heart of the Divine, the Presence and reaching into that heart and its realities and its dress and its blessings upon our soul that alhamdulillah the holy Qur'an is dressing us from its infinite blessings and its dressings and that we reach towards verse 16, 17 and entering in now to the stories of Sayyidina Sulaiman And because of the humility of Sayyidina Muhammad that gives the understanding of the Kingdom of God from the example of the Prophets of the Divine. That when we want to understand because Prophet is, is of a extremely humble nature not to show himself as anything, not to show his Kingdom on this earth. And Allah Khuluqul Azeem describes you are of a magnificent character and I'll describe about Sayyidina Sulaiman And the kingdom of Sulaiman is an immensely important understanding upon this earth for all of shaitans are running after it. All their thought of illuminatis and illuminations is the kingdom of Sayyidina Sulaiman They want it, they want to replicate it, they want its powers. And they want to be master builders and they want the command of the shayateen and the ifrit and shaitan plays with them to make their deeds seem fair and good to them. Make them to feel that they are achieving a power, they are achieving some connection to what they believe to be that source of power and that reality. So it's an immense importance especially in last days when their group of people and their understanding are trying so hard to command the earth. That they want to influence the earth. They have summons many things in the hopes of achieving that power and achieving that reality and that cannot be achieved except by the heavenly kingdom of Allah And that was a sign and everything is a sign when we say ayatul Qur'an it's a sign for the surah and the surah is a face and the face is that which will never perish. That wajallah the face of Allah can never be seen. But the face of the prophetic reality because it is in the oceans of creation and that reality of that Divinely face reflecting upon the prophetic reality is our whole existence and our whole pursuit is for the presence of that holy face. It springs from the fountain of pre-eternal realities. 
while everything else will perish Allah is giving to us not that face, not that which is reflecting directly from Allah's essences and every one of heavenly realities is moving towards that ocean of reality and they wish to be dressed by that reality. And all these teachings or to reach towards that Divinely secret and that which will never perish. And shaitan fools humanity and dunya and dunya desired people that they can imitate certain actions and they will reach to that power and then they make contracts with the shayateen. And their actions are blasphemous and inspired by devils and as a result of their blasphemous actions the devils grant them a support from the power that they have and their power is of a falsehood and perishing, that it's not something that would be eternal. And alhamdulillah those whom Allah guides towards Divinely oceans and there are levels of guidance. This level of guidance that taught is from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad It's what we call the Muhammadan haqqaiqs and truths. That they are from the, spount, the fountains and the springs of reality that are the seven essences of that Divinely face as if we could understand there are springs of, of Divinely lights that flow from that reality and we wish to drink from them, bathe from them, to be immersed within that ocean of light. That one of them as Sami al-Basir too, Sami al-Basir to hear from Divinely lights. And Allah's essence of al-Sami, the one whom hears al-Basir, the one whom sees. This is just an example of these essences that are like for us to understand because we can't understand in, in, in words that you're asking to bathe from that face in your soul, to be taken into that presence and these realities are like oceans and springs that are flowing. For if that sifat of Allah that Divinely name of the all hearing begin to dress upon the servant that servant will be dressed by Divinely hearing. And the more that they enter into that, the more they enter into that, the more they will hear from the Divinely powers. When Allah and this, this reality of the Holy Face is a Hadith Al-Qudsi that when My servants they did their obligatory, obligatory worship, they're approaching Me with voluntary actions means they're approaching me with love and muhabbat. They did what they have been commanded and they do what Allah has commanded of them. But Allah has inspired within them a love and a pursuit to do more. And then Allah's promise in Hadith Al-Qudsi, I'll be the hearing in which you hear. And we repeat this often on this teaching platform, I'll be the seeing in which you see I'll be the breath in which you breathe. What kind of breath has, has Divinely power? With what power that breath comes and fuels the soul and what is the soul able to do with that breath? I'll be the breathing in which you breathe, I'll be the tongue in which you speak. That the uloom and the knowledges that Allah if you drinking from that fountain Allah's grace and majesty blesses that tongue and its heart and its source to be a tongue from the fountains of paradise. I'll be the hands in which you, you touch because your hands will have a Divine power upon them. Yad Allah's hand upon your hand upon the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad That means your hands will be supported. I'll be the feet and the feet of your movement. I'll be the eternal qadam and the one whom directs your heart and directs your movement and your path. It's not just the feet because Allah is, is giving a, a reality of the heart. These are all happening within the heart. 
For when Allah begins Qalbul Mu'min Baytullah, when Allah begin to make His home within the heart of the servant, it's from the power of the heart that all these faculties are now empowered. When Allah residing within the heart, He's dressing their hearing with Divine hearing. When Allah is residing within the heart, dressing with Divine firasal and vision, they see what people can't imagine. They see with the Divinely light and Prophet described, be careful of their vision. For they see with the lights of Allah and each two different darajats of what they have achieved. They speak from Allah's Divinely grace and majesty. They breathe from these oceans of power, their hands are supported by the heavenly kingdom, tabarakalladi bi yadihi mulk. Blessed be the hands whom Allah has given this mulk and this kingdom to. And their feet, their path, their qadam is, is directly under the power of their heart. That Allah commands their feet, their movement and their tariq, their path towards that Divine the Presence so that they can reach the destiny that Allah has written for them. And so much so they become Rabbaniyoon that because if Allah dressing the senses of humanity, dressing the senses of insan, a person and being, of course they're lordly, they're not common. They're of a lordly nature and that their will matches the will of Allah and Allah completes by saying, they merely ask and it will be, kun fayakun. So we said that this reality of manifestation, this hadith is describing the immense potential of humanity that we have the ability to hear with God's hearing. Not the giraffe, not the baboon because they think they're from baboons. But no, we're from heavens, we're not from baboons. And as a result Allah those whom are from heaven, they have the potential to be dressed by God's essences, Allah's essences. And what a power they would have that Allah confirms. They merely ask and, kun fayakun, it will be. So this is the amazing grace and the blessings that Allah has given to humanity if they rise to the occasion and become human. We are just talking beasts at this point, that the humanity has been lost. This is the difference of our understandings and what they teach. They want to say that we are from baboons and that we are at the height of our humanity and that we went to a moon. Wink, wink. <laughs> but only Allah come and teach, no, we were much more powerful when we arrived. We arrived with in, in immense power, immense knowledges, immense realities. Then when Adam, Sayyidina Adam salam came onto this earth, alama isma kullaha that Allah said, we have taught him all, all knowledges. His heart has access to Divinely databases that can't be understood above the level of angels. Because he asked the angels, do you know of this knowledge? They said, no, only know what you have given us of knowledge. So then bow down to his knowledge. And the angels bowed down in respect. That was the dalil that you have the potential of being much higher than angels. You have the potential of reaching these knowledges and it's the knowledge that gives you a darajat in Allah's presence. Not your praying, not your fasting, not your giving. He didn't say, I, I gave Adam lots of cash, he's going to be giving lots of zakat, bow down. Is going to be a really generous creation of mine. He said, oh wait until this Adam prays, he's going to pray more than all you angels, bow down to him. Alama isma kullaha. I have given him an uloom 
because the knowledge signifies the condition of the heart. This what I bestowed upon him of realities, you must show a respect to it and bow down. And who didn't bow down was the one who came with his amal, Azazi. Azazil didn't bow down because he said, I prayed a lot, why I got to bow down to his knowledge? Teaching that these two madhabs, one madhab that feels that their worshipness earns them a place in Allah's presence. But that was the way of shaitan. He thought that he made sujood everywhere and that he taught the angels everything. But of that knowledge Allah bestowed, no you don't have it, you're not the khalifa. And when Allah asked to show that if you're praying and your knowledge doesn't be benefit you, what is it for? Because I ask one thing from you, bow down. And all your praying, Azazil prayed where they say not even a hand is left. He prayed all of the earth, all of the spaces and all into the heavens. He kept making sujood and every step he would make sujood, at every step he would make sujood. Heavy on amal, the knowledges, the gaining began to teach the angels. And because of all the actions and, and coming heavy with actions thinking, my place with Allah is warranted, I'm, I own it, it's mine. So Allah want to show all those actions and all your worshipness, I asked you one thing, bow down. And you said, no, you said, no, I can't bow down, I can't show respect to Adam, I'm better than him. I'm more powerful than him and then begin to teach this way. That's why Allah guides people to the turuqs. The turuqs and the path of realities is paved with good manners and good characteristics. Not that they are perfected people but they took a path towards perfection and all these knowledges Allah wants to open within the heart so that the servant can hear. First thing they'll hear is their consciousness of right and wrong. When they're able to understand that consciousness Allah will begin to inspire them of Divinely knowledges. Open their eyes so they can see. You have to close your physical eyes that Allah gave to you that are falling under the temptation of devils. When you give back what Allah has given to you, He purifies it, cleans it and gives it back to you divinely. That which somebody gives to you, you return it. You don't steal it and run away. So people think they, they got these gifts from Allah that's what Islam is. What is Islam? If you make analogies for people to understand, we came onto this house and this house is filled with all sorts of goods. Everyone thinks that they're going to come and steal what they can from the goods, put them in their pockets and run. And Allah said, I give you these things, where are you running? Islam means I'm submitting my will to your Divinely will and I realize I'm merely a servant in this house. There's nothing for me to steal, you're not going to be able to bury me with them. So I'm, I'm a caretaker of these realities, I enter into the house, I take what I can use and the rest is of service to Allah's creation. That's what Islam is. That they came to the understanding that my will must submit to the will of Allah God Almighty and that He's the owner of everything Malikul Mulk and I own nothing and whatever He has given to me I'm merely a custodian and put into trust. 
And it's not here for me to pillage and steal and take and run. Because of that characteristic Allah then grants them Islam, they're now understanding submission. But you didn't get the prize because you have to submit so much, so much, so much until you've been granted iman and faith. And then faith is all the testing. So Allah opens the hearing so they hear, opens their seeing because they gave back their seeing, I don't want to see all these things. I want to take a path in which I reflect often and I close my eyes from all around me and I block out everything like my grave and I ask Allah are you pleased with me Ya Rabbi? I want to give back this eyesight in which that I'm not taking my direction from what my eyes see. I don't see television and say, oh my goodness what's happening. But I get my television from the heavens. When we surrender our faculty Allah purifies it and gives it back pure and purified. Then now I become your seeing because you're looking through your heart to see and not the fake eyes that you have. You're hearing with your heart to hear and not these ears. Because here these ears hear gossip and all sorts of waswas and whisperings. I gave back my breath and my life. You know the, the mouse that runs on these treadmills? These people are running, treadmill's okay because uh, you got to use it to lose weight. But the one whom running like they think they're conquering the earth, it's really that mouse that's going nowhere. Does this person know they're dying soon? We came into this world as a one whom their clock already ticking. We came in dying. We didn't come in, we were going forever. All I get a ding, there's a, I think a movie where they have time on them and they're running, running, running just to buy time. They go work and their pay is in time, extra time, extra time. We were born into death. So Allah said, where are you taking that? Then Allah said, begin to power their breath and they surrendered their dunya breath that I'm not going to use this breath and all my energy, all my thing to conquer the earth. Ya Rabbi I want to use my breath and the breathing and in your consciousness and in the way of reaching towards your Divine ridha and satisfaction so that I can understand the commands that are coming to me. Allah take that breath and then energize it with nafas rahmah and that that servant begins to breathe from their paradise and a, what can't be seen and understood as if a mask from heavens occupies that servant and they breathe from an air that other people don't breathe. And that's why people want to eat from their food, drink from their food, want them to pray upon because they're breathing from a paradise reality. You think the knowledges they have and the du'as that Allah has dressed them by, it's sustained by the dirtiness of this dunya that are filled with shaitans and ifrit, every breath you breathe. How many millions of ifrit are in that breath? There are places now they, they say they can see this black like a tar coming down when they look. It's in the air and the atmosphere of dunya. You think that that atmosphere sustains their heart for these uloom, these knowledges and these realities? Or Allah is suffice for His believer but that is not for everybody, they didn't reach belief. When Allah says, I'm suffice for you that I give you an air to breathe from your paradise reality. I give to you to hear from your paradise reality. I give for you to see from your paradise reality. I give to you a support. Your paradise reality comes with its power and supports your hand. That Allah's hand upon the hand of that servant because they surrendered their hand from dunya and they made, what do you do with your hands? Your rizq and your khidmat. That you day all day long you work for dunya 
to accomplish dunya, to, to conquer dunya. What have you done with your hands for Allah and that the, you were of service to Allah because Allah says, those whom they gave their hands back that, I never put my hand into the material world. I have to do the time because the job I have and the hours I have to make. But a greater portion of my hand and my, my ability should be for Allah Whether I'm busy making my zikr, busy of being of service and cleaning and doing and serving and worshipping. All of those in Allah take back the hands, so I take those and I put my hand upon your hand. Means my madad is with you, that Sayyidina Muhammad must be with you to put. You can never have Allah without your imam, without the, the blessings of Sayyidina Muhammad It's fasiq, that's a, it's a false and incorrect understanding to cut out. Sayyidina Muhammad and Allah want to dress the hand, your hand already been dressed by Sayyidina Muhammad Ya Ashiqeen, you're the one whom is trying to promote that love and that ishq and to be of service to those whom promoting and inactive in that love means that the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad must be upon their hands otherwise they can't achieve anything in this world. Try a normal person to try to achieve anything will be stopped by a thousand shaitans and make every type of difficulty. If not the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad upon that servant's hand, nothing of those realities can open, no ability can be opened and that's why everything opens for them miraculous. Halls that open, programs that open, cities that open. Because the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad is a pawn because that was the madad. That they lived their life in madad, that their shaykh's hand is upon their hand. That hand came with the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad and who comes with the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad The hand of Allah I say, Prophet thinks you're good enough and supporting your hand, Allah said, I'm with you. Because Allah said, what? I'm with Nabiin, Siddiqi, Shuhadai wa Salihin. He said, this is the best of company. So you came through the first door, you don't go straight to the top door. You came through Salihin, that was the Kaaba, the four corners. How can you get Allah's hand on your hand, Allah's eyes on your eyes, Allah's hearing on your hearing and you didn't come through the correct door, the correct understanding. That's why the Kaaba has four corners. You go to Salihin and you keep the company of Salihin and the hand of Salihin with you and they teach you meditate, meditate because we're Salihin by the power of the shuhada. They take you to the next corner and those shuhada means they're Ahlul Basira, shuhud. What mah… other than shuhud become mash. Mushahada, they speak in Chinese all these words. It's easier just to say witnessing, right? So Salihin, you have to have been in the company of Salihin, otherwise you didn't get to Allah by jumping all the way over. The Salihin put their hand, they stamped you. The Salihin who are real Salihin, they taught you how to connect with shuhada. In this one, their heart open, they're teaching you. Then that shuhada, mushahada, that servant whom he died before death and Allah opened his heart, he put his hand upon your hand. And for him to have reached that station, he must be directly under the nazar and support of Siddiqeen, either Imam Ali salam and Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq salam. Naqshbandiya has both of the Siddiqs. That's why it has the two nukhs for Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq. They describe Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq brought both of these secrets into Naqshbandiya, the two dots. The two realities were brought into Naqshbandiya tal aliya. If other tariqahs are of a reality, Naqshbandiya is the essence of all tariqahs. The secret of all tariqahs lies within the reality of Naqshbandiya tal aliya. 
Because these mushahada, these shuhada, they are taking their secret from these great siddiqs at that corner. Imam Ali dressing them, blessing them. Imam and Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq dressing them, blessing them with the best of characteristic and both are taking that servant to Nabiyeen because that's the door that Sayyidina Muhammad is accepting. That you came under these Sahabi, that you came under the love and training of these Sahabi, they have a clear access into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad because if their hand on your hand, why Prophet would not take it? If Sayyidina Abu Bakr siddiq's hand and said, this is my grandson, he gave everything in his love, he tried his best to be of sincerity, he's continuously under my nazar, my hand with him. And Imam Ali comes and says, my hand with him, that he is a Ahlul Futuwa. That he is enrolled in the schools of chivalry and they are like the knights of Allah They are extremely powerful but very gentle and soft. Chivalry is knighthood. The kingdom of, of Sayyidina Muhammad the kingdom of Allah is not a barnyard, it's knighthood. So Imam Ali has to come and say, this one is being trained in the way of knighthood. Being trained in the way of being a rijal, how to have their good characteristics. Again, it's not perfection, but when you're wrong, you're wrong and you acknowledge your wrongness. And you try your best to have good character, be humble, bring yourself to be down, but uphold the way of Sayyidina Muhammad to the best of your ability. And all their practices and struggling, it's not easy to come all the time, it's not easy to travel to these ways, it's not easy to participate, it's not easy to give, it's not easy to do any of it. But they struggle and strive in the way of Allah and as a result the two take the hand to the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's the bayah, inna ladina yubayyunaka yubayyoon Allah because the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad is what Allah says in Qur'an, inna ladheena yubayyoonaka yubayyoon Allah, yaad Allah. Allah is describing in Holy Qur'an the hand of Prophet is the hand of Allah So who's going to reach to that hand? So their lives is the turuq, they, they went through all of this to reach. Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad hand upon their hand, Allah secures the covenant that my hand is upon these hands because it's all under the izzat and might, under the will and the permission of Allah They're not operating as something separate and as a result of that of course then they've been dressed with salihin, they've been dressed with shuhada, they've been dressed with siddiqeen. And Prophet came and sweetened all their faculties and they've been dressed with Nabi'een. And then Allah said, if all of them dressed you, of course I'm dressing you. You're now dressed by Allah That is the power, that is the heart. In that heart lies all these powers and all these realities. So when Sayyidina Sulaiman is being described, it's a secret in that name, Sulaiman. And it's a reflection of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad that was too humble to show his kingdom on earth and didn't want his nation to go astray. One Prophet showed how he raises the dead and his people worshipped him. He said, it's not good to be for my people. We keep the way of humility and I'm on a bashar mithluna, I'm a human like you to show no difference. And that's what chivalry is, that they are very different but they don't show that. You look at them and say, eh, this is no one, don't even pronounce things correctly. And this is the way of humility, to be nothing, to be nothing so that to be dressed by these realities so that when they 
have that reality that's the kingdom that is in pursuit, that's the kingdom that has that authority within their heart. The kingdom of Sayyidina Sulaiman and what he was showing of, I have command of the birds, I have command of the ifrit and the jinn and I have command of humans and Allah described that they were all in ranks to show what type of power and got that command by the request of a sunnah ring. He didn't have that power, he was overtaken by the jinn as they were attacking his kingdom and they killed his wife. And he begged for Allah that, send me a mulk that you haven't sent before and send me to be more wealthier than them and those who are in need, means give me a mulk and power so that I can be of support and help. And Allah sent him a ring from the kingdom of Sayyidina Muhammad Everything given to the Prophets of Allah was under the Rasulat of Sayyidina Muhammad and was the noble sunnah. And every Prophet of Allah was begging for something from Prophet He gave him the ring, Lord of the ring. How Allah is directing because we said all of this was to reach the hand. Right? You went from the Salihin, you went from Shuhada, you went to Siddiqeen so that your hand would be blessed by Nabiheen. And when Prophet takes your hand, Allah's hand is on, on and igniting that hand with power. That ring seals that love, you know. That, that ring is coming from them and say that, we love you, your allegiance with us. Minhi wa minhum, you are from me and people will see you through me. Minhi wa minhum, that you are from the Muhammadan light and when people look to you they will see me, they will see the Muhammadan light and that's what they're attracted to, not that person. But the light that reflects within them, that is the reality of the Sulaiman Kingdom, that is the command of all the, the, this earth and the heavens. And that when they could hear the birds and command the birds, could command the ifrit, could command all of these realities, that's why shaitan is in pursuit of that reality. And they imitate that reality to try to show they have some authority but they're using shayateen and it's not an authority and it's every falsehood. And what Allah describes the falsehood that verily falsehood is perishing. Everything and every false thing has a time and when the time comes it should be zahukan, it should be completely obliterated. We pray that Allah give us a life in which to see that time and that reality and that the kingdom of Allah to begin to be activated upon this earth and to take away every type of uh, fasiq and badness and, and harm and evilness. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen muhammadillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati muhammadil mustafa wa bi siri surah al fatiha. What you got? Today is inshaAllah Thursday and alhamdulillah we have our immensely exciting and, and blessed Mawlid the Nabi For us on Friday we have the hall, we have a big Jashn Eid Milad the Nabi And then Saturday and, and Sunday we'll be doing again here, I think the actual 12th will be on Monday inshaAllah. InshaAllah Allah dress us with these immense lights and blessings and every night of it to be a celebration in paradises and Allah include us in those lights and in those blessings. Not by our amal and actions that we warrant it but by our love within our heart and acknowledging our weaknesses and continuously falling short from what Allah wanted for us. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.